Well, welcome to another uh, Bible Truth broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Gill. I'm an itinerant evangelist that believes in expositional preaching. I like to do it line upon line, precept upon precept. I like to do it in a serious form, I like to do it with enthusiasm. It's a joy to have you on the broadcast today. Hope you'll have a Bible handy, notebook, something to write with. You'll find our text in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 13, verse 7. We began preaching on this a few weeks ago and want to bring a concluding thought on it. Uh, the writer of Hebrews put this at the back door of the Hall of Fame chapter. He said, Remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God. It's not the immediate past, those that shared the word with him, but those from the distant future, uh, the distant past that shared the word of God, laid the foundation for it all. He asked us to examine a couple of things whose faith followed. Find out what kind of faith they had, seek to mimic it. Considering the end of their conversation, find out how they crossed the finish line and seek to do likewise. And uh, so for some time at various times on the broadcast, we've looked at some of these from the past with this question in mind, is there any among us like these? And on our last broadcast, we began to look at the life story of Leo Tolstoy, T-O-L-S-T-O-Y. Uh, he was a Russian uh, author, probably one of the greatest minds that Russia has ever uh, produced. He was confronted with Three questions, they haunted him in his life. One, uh, who sent me into this world? And uh, second, why did he send me into this world? And the third, what will become of me when I leave this world? And after a lifetime of all kinds of abominable sin, he was left with three choices. One, eat drink and be merry for tomorrow we die second kill myself third become religious and so that's what he did he became religious and uh, he continued in his abominable sin but those closest to him his neighbors and friends uh, they thought that he was a very religious and moral man I would also mention not only his announcement, his abomination, but his accomplishments. He died in 1920, uh, some 90 plus years ago. He wrote 26 books, essays, and plays. Some 97 years later, he's still among the top the authors and readers on the list of readers and authors. He wrote War and Peace. He wrote Death of Ivan Lynch. He wrote The Living Corpse. He wrote Anna Katrina. He wrote a book called The Resurrection, A Confession of Rest. He wrote a book called The Kingdom of God Within. Uh, he wrote a book on What I Believe wrote a book on the power of darkness. He wrote a book on the light that shines in the dark. He wrote a book on the fruit of enlightenment. Though he be dead some 90 plus years, his voice still speaks to those who yet live. Is there any among us today that we're living our life on such an eternal plane that even years after we're gone, if the Lord hasn't returned, we will still be affecting those uh, uh, that uh, knew us. Or will it possibly be six months to a year after we leave this world, they won't even know our name. They won't even remember us. I'm telling you today, my friend, if you're not making an eternal effect, if you're not bringing heaven down uh, to reside and inject itself in earthly situations, I'm telling you today, no one will remember you. 
when you're gone. Not only his announcement, his abominations, his accomplishments, but could I mention his awakenings? Remember, he was confronted with three questions. Who sent me into this world? Why did he send me into this world? And third, what will become of me when I leave this world? These three statements haunted Leo Tolstoy for a number of years. He became a very religious man. And at the age of 50, he had amassed a great wealth. He had a very large plantation, had a wife and several kids. He began to um, hobnob with the very elite. They thought he was a religious, moral man. And he began to hang out with the peasants on his plantation. And he began to listen to them. Many of them knew the Lord as their Savior and King. And as he began to listen to them, as they shared the gospel, it began to stare in Leo's heart. But one of the greatest uh, convicting instruments was he saw them die with such peace in their hearts because they knowed the Lord. Old Leo told stories said that one day after hearing them share the gospel while they were working both in word and in song he said he slipped away into the woods to be alone. And he said while he was uh, sitting out there in the woods that the gospel message came like a lightning bolt to his heart and transformed him into one of God's children. He said later, I realized out there in the woods that Jesus was what I sought for all of my life. Leo told story, gloriously saved from a life of abominable sin. His announcement, his abominations, his accomplishment, but his awakening. Oh, my friend today, is there any among us that the gospel has come like a lightning bolt to your heart and has awakened you from the darkness of your sin. Could I mention uh, also, if you have your Bibles there, Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 6, His Advancement. A verse that God put in Leo Tolstoy's heart. That's how God saves people. Puts a word in their heart. Creates Christ in them through that word. The word that he put in the heart of Leo Tolstoy was uh, Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. Most often we reverse that. We seek to have help in all of our things and we leave the seeking of the kingdom of God and his righteousness to later and all our things suffer if we would seek him and his kingdom first he'll take care of all of our things seek ye first a life of pressing after him Leo spent the next 40 years of his life pressing after Jesus placing Jesus first and foremost in his life the kingdom of God the rulership the lordship he spent the next 40 years yielding his will to God with not my will but thy will be done on earth as it was in heaven his righteousness his resemblance I want to be like Leo I don't want to be like Tom I want to be like him spent the next 40 years pressing towards that mark Matter of fact, Leo Tolstoy said he was uh, preaching in New Zealand 
on that text, Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. And he said before he got done preaching, a 72-year-old lady come crying to the mourner's bench at the front. And she kept crying out and saying, Oh, Lord, surely I have not waited too late to seek you. And oh, she was gloriously saved that morning. And she spent the next 15 years confronting young people about the need to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Oh, that message that morning was like a lightning bolt to that elderly lady and struck the gospel to her heart with that verse. She realized that she needed to seek the Lord. You'll never seek the Lord, my friend, until God puts seeking in your heart. And if he puts seeking in your heart, I assure you today, you shall be found by him. Not only do I see in our story, is there any among us like Leo told story? His announcement, his abomination, his accomplishment, his awakening, his advancement. Last of all, his afflictions. After his conversion, he became a great giver. Uh, he was giving away much of his wealth, and his wife did not like it. As far as we know, his wife was never converted. She hated the fact that Leo was giving away their wealth. And at the age of 92, Leo told story, signed over all the rights to everything that he owned, all of his royalties, his plantation. He signed over all of his books to her. He gave it all to her and he left her at the age of 92. After doing that, a short while later, he died in the apartment of the train station manager there in their local community. The train station manager said his last words were these. You know, you tell a lot about a person's last words. Barnum Bailey, Barnum of the Barnum and Bailey outfit, his last words was, how much money do we take in tonight? Leo told stories, last words were these to the train station manager. May I die as the peasants die. Oh, he realized that day when the gospel struck his heart like a lightning bolt, awakening him to who Jesus was. He had watched those peasants die. They died with what such peace and such grace. Dying grace was given to them. So it was so applicable that his last words would be that I may die as the peasants die. Is there any among us today with such peace to die? I remember calling a dear lady not long ago. Her husband was in the throes of death. Hospice had already been called in. And he was dying when I was talking to her on the phone. And I asked her, I said, how you doing? I was, I was so thrilled with what she said. She said, preacher, the only thing I know is this. It is well with my soul. I tell you today, as Leo Tolstoy died some years ago with that thought that is well in my soul because of the lightning bolt of that gospel. I tell you, is there any among us like that today? Well, it's been a joy to have you on the broadcast today. Remind you of our study website, TomGillum.com. We have Bible studies there. Hook up to these YouTube broadcasts. Have a daily blog there. We're going through the book of Matthew for a few verses at the time. TomGillum.com If we can ever help you pray about something, you're interested in a meeting, our open dates are on that website. You can email us at tbgillum at aol.com Thanks for listening today.